Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Gorhamian here with Misfit Studios as always, and today we're going to be showing you how to animate a very simple logo in HitFilm Express. Okay, so to animate your logo, of course, the very first thing you're going to need is a logo. Um, I'm going to be using the Misfit Studios logo, of course, and then the other asset I have is a little bit of sound that I did get from Soundcrate. I'll have a link in the description below on where to find those assets. Um, but first, we're actually going to need to make a background of some sort. You can use an animated background, you can use a video for a background, um, but for this one, we're actually just going to make a plane. So let's go ahead and make a new plane. We're going to keep the color at a, like a, about that silver color. Um, it'll default at white. Um, but if you change the plane every time you make one, it'll just default to the last color that you use. You can actually, you know, change your little favorites keys too. Um, so let's go ahead and hit OK. Right click and then make a composite shot. The default value is going to be 30 seconds long. That's perfectly fine. We can, um, we can trim that down. You don't want a logo animation that's, you know, 30 seconds long. So let's go ahead and make this background. If I could learn to type and spell today would be great. Okay, so now that our background is a nice little silver color, um, we're going to need to put in our logo, okay? Let's go ahead and put our logo in. And before we do anything with keyframing, we're gonna go back into our editor, and you can do this before you make a composite shot. Um, we're actually going to just have you guys listen to this sound. That way you can you know, kinda get a feel for it before the animation. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to match our sound with the animation, okay? You don't want to have your sound effects, you know, not linked up or it will turn out really terrible. So let's go ahead and toss our sound in our audio. Um, we're going to actually drag our slider. It looks like if we look at the sound wave, our sound that we want starts about there, about 143. Okay, so we just got to remember that. Just keep this all the same, and you can go back and forth between your composite shot. You know, I named it background. You can name your composite shot, you know, animated logo or whatever you want. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to find at one point in the sound file we need to move, or excuse me, at one what point in the um, composite shot we need to make our animations. Okay, so now that we've got our logo put in, um, let's go ahead and pull the drop down menu down into our transform tab. Okay, the exact same transform tab as any of the other one, you know, previous videos where we did tracking. Um, and we're going to keyframe the scale. And what that's going to do is we're going to go ahead and turn keyframing on for scale. Um, we're going to click zero. And what that's going to do is it's going to throw down a little diamond here. Okay, that little diamond tells hit film that that particular asset needs to be at this value at this point in time, if that makes sense. So we've keyframed it at the very first frame at 0% scale. So it's gonna be you know invisible, it won't be there, okay? So HitFilm will keep that value until you tell it otherwise. So what we need to do is we need to move our slider to, let's double check on it, I think it was 143. Yep, 143 in the footage. Actually, we were really close. It was 145. Doesn't have to be, you know, exactly because that amount of time won't make any difference. So let's go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. So now our slider is at 143. That's when we want our logo to kind of appear. Not instantaneously because we are going to be animating it a little bit. So we want it to be nice and smooth. Uh, um, so what we need to do is we will actually change the value of the scale. And since the keyframing is turned on, anytime you change a value, you could do 1% size, and it will add a little keyframe because you change the size value, okay? So what we're going to do is we're actually gonna blow this up just a little bit. Don't wanna do negative values, make positive, because if you're negative, of course, the, <laughs> the logo will be upside down or whatever asset will be upside down. Um, so make sure you've got positive value here. You can actually just click and then drag left or right, or you can, you know, hold down a corner and move it that way. So let's go ahead and control Z. We're going to actually go ahead and scale this up to a little bit larger than what we want. So about there. Okay. What that's going to do is it's going to tell, of course, hit film to keyframe. It needs to be at 143 in the footage 
the size needs to be 330% larger. So let's go ahead and go back to the very beginning and click play. And as you can see, that logo slowly gets larger. Okay, it slowly appears. We don't really want that to happen. We actually want it to be a little faster than that and a little more smooth. So what we're going to do is um, we're actually going to change the keyframe till about, let's go ahead and play our sound. That way we get kind of an idea of where we want that to start. So let's go ahead and have it start at 125 within that, okay? Let's go ahead and go back to the composite shot and we're gonna go change this to 125. Actually, that's really fast. So let's go ahead at one second. Let's start this at one second. We're actually going to change this to right there. That way, the very beginning, the first second of the intro will not have anything in other than the background. We're going to go ahead and play that. That's that's actually not bad. Okay, I like that. So let's go um, and give it just a little bit of a little bit of a bounce. So what that's going to do is we're actually going to bring this slider back to our last keyframe. You know, the 330 percent. And we're actually going to jump this over. And we're going to go two frames. Just click two frames over and make this the size that you want it. So we're going to make that smaller just a touch, just like that. Um, and what that's going to do is it's going to give it kind of a kind of a unique bounce animation. It's just going to be nice, quick, little, you know, larger and smaller. So let's go ahead and play that. See, it kind of it gives it a little, just a little bounce. And that's just one of those little things to kind of give it just that added little polish, that added little edit to make it make it look nice. So what we want to do now is we want to actually smooth this out because this this not very smooth. It's kind of jankety, if you will. And so what we're going to do is we're actually going to drag and highlight all of our keyframes, come up here and convert selected keyframes to smooth. Okay, what that's going to do is it's going to smooth everything out. So let's go ahead and play through it. It's not bad. It's really not bad. That's all there is to it. We really don't have to do anything else other than that right there. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to our editor. We're actually going to take our sound out for right now. We're going to be putting it back in here in a second. Um, and then over in the media tab, every single time that you make a composite shot, it will put that in your media window, okay? So let's go ahead and drag that into our um, timeline. We actually only want to use the video portion of it. So we're going to have to unlink, right-click and unlink, highlight the audio file and delete that. We're going to actually bring in our sound here. Of course, it's a lot longer than necessary because it was, you know, 30 seconds long. We're going to go ahead and trim that there. We're going to trim it down a little bit more, but I just wanted to see how well we did with linking everything up. So let's go ahead and hit play. It actually doesn't look too bad. Um, we are actually going to cut this just a little short where the sound ends. That way, when you transition it through the rest of your footage, you can do that. And it looks just a little bit better. Oh, we need to slice the bottom too because it wasn't linked with the video. Um, let's go ahead and export this out and see how it did. I know, guys, it's not all that complicated. It's not all that detailed. It doesn't look fancy and flashy. This was just kind of a little introduction into keyframing and kind of how things work within your timeline. So let's go ahead and export this out. And what we're going to do is export contents because we only want this little section here. Okay, now that we've got that exported out, let's go ahead and play it and see how we did. See how it looks. It's really not bad. I like it. It's simple, easy. Um, it's not real flashy. You know, of course, there's not crazy amounts of animation in it because we, you know, just used a logo and, you know, kind of blew that up. Um, thank you guys for watching. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Leave a comment down below on anything else you guys want to see from HitFilm Express, and we will see you guys next time.